Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the 52 Nifty Buckish Questions tag. So this was created by Stripped Cover Lit, and I was tagged to do this by Bucky Lara. I will link both of their videos below so you can check that out. As you might have guessed from the title, there are 52 questions here, and I'm just going to crack straight on so that we don't go on for too long. So, question number one, what book are you reading right now? So I am currently reading Four Tales by Philip Pullman, illustrated by Peter Bailey. I'm actually on tale number three of four, which is called Clockwork, or All Wound Up. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good so far. And it's also illustrated, and obviously just this beautiful hard, hardback edition as well. Very nice. Question number two, what was the last thing you highlighted? I have no idea. It would have been something in school. I don't tend to highlight books. Um, I use tabs sometimes to tab things out, but... Um, yeah, I don't tend to highlight passages because I'll just tab the page they're on and then find the passage, you know? Question three, what do you plan to read next? Well, that comes back to four tales because after that, uh, after reading Clockwork or All Wound Up, I'm going to read The Scarecrow and His Servant, which is part number four. And then after that, I'm going back to some, some uh, Penguin Mini Moderns. We have some down here. Uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Sketchy Doubtful Incomplete Jottings, and Anton Chekhov, Gooseberries. So both of those, very nice. Question number four, one fiction writer, living or dead, with which I would like to grab a drink. Uh, I guess I would go for Terry Pratchett because I think it would be fun and Stephen King's an ex-alcoholic, Charles Bukowski was an alcoholic so probably best to go with, with one of the ones who wasn't an alcoholic because then things would just descend into madness, you know? Question number five, one non-fiction writer, living or dead, with which I would like to grab a drink. I would say Richard Dawkins and we would chat about religion and uh, biology and science and stuff. Question number six, one poet living or dead with which I would like to grab a drink. I think with that one I am actually going to have to go for Charles Bukowski, either that or Allen Ginsberg, I don't know. Question number seven, one booktuber with which I would like to grab a drink. Todd the Librarian. Todd is my drinking buddy even though we've never met. <laughs> Question number eight, Emily Dickinson or Edgar Allan Poe. Poe. Sorry, Dickinson. Question number nine, Hemingway or Fitzgerald? Hemingway. Question number 10, Jane Austen or Charles Dickens? Dickens. Question number 11, Harris or Hitchens? Okay, now this needs some clarification. I'm assuming it's Christopher Hitchens. And for Harris, we're on about Robert Harris? That's a very, like, two different writing styles. I've actually never read any Hitchens, although he is on my uh, list. So I guess I'll go for Harris if we're talking about Robert Harris. But we might not be, I don't know. Okay, I just realised I said Robert Harris, I meant Thomas Harris. But there is a novelist called Robert Harris as well, so this is where the issue comes in, you see? Anyway, moving on. Question number 12, Stephen King or Michael Crichton? Stephen King. Question number 13, Brett Easton Ellis or Chuck Palahniuk? Palahniuk, Paul, Paul and Nick. Uh, I'm going for, uh, for Chuck, even though I can't pronounce his name. Question number 14, Kurt Vonnegut or John Green? Pff, Kurt Vonnegut, I don't know, they're both alright. Uh, yeah. Question number 15. Shakespeare's poems or plays? Plays. Question number 16. Adrian Fort or Dalton Gentry? I am not playing favourites. There we go. Although, probably Dalton. Question number 17. Cormac McCarthy or J.K. Rowling? J.K. Rowling, I guess. Question number 18. Hannibal Lecter or Voldemort? I don't know. Voldemort. Sorry, Lecter. I like them both. They're both great villains. Uh, Stephen King actually said that uh, Umbridge was the greatest villain to come along since Hannibal Lecter. Question number 19, T.C. Boyle or George Saunders? I've not read either of them, so I don't know. George Saunders, why not? Question number 20, good writing or good story? Good writing, uh, although, you know, preferably both. Question number 21, YA or children's lit? I, I, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you where the difference between the two of them comes in. Probably children's lit. Question number 22, irony or humour? Irony, probably. Question number 23, sci-fi or horror? Horror. Question number 24, fantasy or non-fiction? Non-fiction, I think. Question number 25, would you rather find a new favourite contemporary writer or a new favourite all-time great? Probably a new favourite all-time great because it means that usually their entire backlist is there ready for me to discover, you know? Uh, yeah, whereas a new favourite contemporary writer, they might, might only have one or two books out. Question number 26, sonnet or haiku? Probably, ooh, I went to say sonnet there, but I think actually haiku. I, I used to prefer writing haiku, and 
I've got more haiku collections than Sonic collections, I think. Question number 27, Sestina or Villanelle? Villanelle, because again, I used to write them occasionally. Question number 28, spend the evening at a library or bookstore? Yes. Oh no, I have to choose. I would personally probably rather go for a pub that had a book exchange and a little nook I could read in. But I guess I'd rather spend the evening at... I don't know, because neither of them are usually open in the evenings by me. I guess a bookstore, because they might have slightly more like amenities, like a coffee shop. Question number 29, magazine or Wikipedia article? Wikipedia article. Question number 30, dictionary or encyclopedia? Wikipedia. Question number 31, the writer I would like to write my biography. I'm going to say Minu Dinshaw because he did a really good biography of Stephen Runciman that I had to read for the Young Writer of the Year award and it was very well written. Question number 32, I do slash do not highlight in my books. I do not highlight in my books. Question number 33, I do slash do not write in my books. I do not write in my books. Question number 34, earliest memory of a library. I guess it's just when I was ill, I used to go and visit my grandparents and they used to take me to the library and they'd pick out a book with me and then they'd take the book home and then they'd record that book as an audio book for, for me to listen to in bed. And they used to ring a little bell so I knew when it was time to, to turn the page over. Question number 35, last time you went to the library, couldn't even tell you. Well, the last time I was in a library was probably when I was in Latvia's National Library last year. Um, I don't really use the library, so... Question number 36. Have you ever stolen slash accidentally stolen books from the library? Pretty sure I did when I was a kid, but I don't know. I don't think I still own any. Question number 37. Ballpark. How many books do you own? Well, we don't need to do a ballpark figure because I can just go on my Goodreads. So I've got 1,604 on my red pile and 238 unread. So I own 1,842 books. Question number 38. How many books do you think would make for a reasonable personal library? Uh, slightly more than however many I just said. No, I really don't care. Your library is your library. You know, you decide. Uh, as for me, I just keep one of every book that I read. Question number 39. So there's Sense and Sensibilities and Sea Monsters, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, etc. How do you feel about the phenomenon? I'm not really too bothered. Uh, I read Death Comes to Pemberley, which I guess is kind of similar to that phenomenon. Yeah, I think it's all good. As long as, you know, people are handling these kind of subjects with love and you can tell that they really love the original book, I think why not, you know, especially because it might get more people reading classics. Question number 40. Horror trope you would like to see get more love? I don't know. I, I'm pretty bored of tropes in general, to be honest. Question number 41. Something you think gets underutilised in sci-fi? I don't know, if it's underutilised, it means it's still fresh and exciting, which means if I knew what it was, I'd probably be writing sci-fi and using it myself. Question 42. Flash fiction, form of and format of literature, or it's just a short story, dummy? Yeah, it's a form of and format of literature. I've read some flash fiction collections. I think they're great. I've actually been writing flash fiction myself and uh, might do a flash fiction book one day. We'll see. Question number 43. If you could own one book from all of history, what would it be? I'd have to do some research and find a really rare book that would sell for loads. Probably some like book of the like lost book of the Bible or something like that because I could make a lot of money from it. Question number 44. Audiobooks the same as reading? Uh, well my answer is sort of. I mean it's obviously going to change your experience and enjoyment of the book very slightly. However if you've read an audiobook you've read the book as long as you've listened to the full non-truncated version. Why not? Question number 45, most literary songwriter of your lifetime? Well, I guess it'd be Bob Dylan because he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Question number 46, what writer embarrasses you the most because you haven't read them? Like everybody who's answered this tag, I don't feel embarrassed because I haven't read a particular writer. Uh, I, I guess Jane Austen, although I'm fix fixing that soon. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like I should get to her soon, which is why I'm going to. Question number 47. What writer embarrasses you because you've read too much from them? Again, as before, I'm not embarrassed by this, but I have read a lot of R.L. Stein. He's like my second most read author or something because of the Goosebumps books. Question number 48. What is a biography you are looking forward to reading? Uh, I think it's called The Enigma by John Hodges, and it's about Alan Turing. Uh, it's probably going to be a bedtime book. I'll get there soon. Question number 49. Do you have a dream reading, Cubby? 
I guess one day, yeah, I want to have a room that's like literally wall-to-wall -wall books that's my studio and I'll have a comfy sofa on it. But in the meantime, this is my reading cubby. Question number 50. A last literary phenomenon that really got your gears grinding. Uh, everybody kicking off uh, Marie Kondo for saying you should have like less than 30 books or whatever. When she also said you should get rid of anything that doesn't bring you joy. So if you're like me and your big book collection brings you joy. She's not saying to get rid of it. At least as far as I can tell. I don't know. I haven't read her book. I haven't seen her TV program. So I'm trying to reserve judgment. But I feel like people just like to complain about things. I don't know. 2019 everyone question number 51 what was the last piece of literature that changed the way you read possibly on writing by Stephen King has just made me realize some of the tricks that writers use I guess and question number 52 what booktuber have you been watching the most recently um, well I've just been watching my subscriptions to be honest so, I don't know. I'm going to give you the answer of Ghost Reader because I've got him doing his 2019 wrap-up at the moment. which uh, February 2019 wrap-up. Which, speaking of which, I still need to do mine as well. So, there we have it. I'm also going to tag, I guess, a few people to do this. It doesn't actually seem to be a question on the tag, but whatever. I'm just going to go back into my comments and see who has uh, commented on my videos recently. And we're going to tag six people because why not? So, I am going to tag Jason's Weird Reads. Mama's Book Collection, Linda Jo Martin, The Book Lady, Mindy's Book Journey, Bookish, and Alex Black. There we go. So there we have it. That's my attempt at the 52 Nifty Bookish Questions tag. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think of these answers. And also hit me up if you've done this video yourself. And I'll check it out if I haven't already. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.